Now, a new law comes into force in China this weekend that will force mobile phone users to submit to facial recognition software in order to access the internet. The scan will ensure that they match the photograph on their national identity card. The government in Beijing says it's going to help protect the legitimate rights of citizens in cyberspace. It's the latest part of a nationwide effort to increase the use of the very controversial technology. Well, let's talk now to Dr. Stephanie Hare, who is a specialist in cybersecurity and also has a forthcoming book, Technology Ethics. Dr. Hare, good to speak to you. Um, first of all, explain to me how this is going to work. So from tomorrow in China, if you want to go online or access the internet, either from a device like your computer or a tablet or your mobile phone, you have to submit to a facial biometric scan. So the Chinese state will have access to your facial biometric, which is very similar to like your DNA or your fingerprint or a voice recording. It's a way to uniquely identify you through your body and link your body to your online digital presence. And China is saying it's all about protection, uh, but you don't believe that? It's about total social control. So what we're seeing in China is, a, is an experiment that we have seen nowhere else in the world, which is the ability to finally fuse our physical body with our digital persona. So everything that we do on our mobile phone, which of course tracks us all around with geolocation tracking, as well as everything that we're doing online, until now, it's possible in some countries still to have a bit of privacy and anonymity, but we're seeing, you know, the, the noose is ever tightening. And in China, this is going to be the sort of next step in tightening that total control. And what do you think about the people in China? Is there anything they can do or protest in, in terms of this? I mean, I think the human spirit always finds some way to rebel against this type of control, but it's going to be very difficult. We've seen in the protests in Hong Kong, and we, of course, know that there's over a million people who are kept in concentration camps in the west of the country. There's no, there's no hope for them necessarily to protest against this, and it's very difficult for ordinary people to protest against a state this powerful. And what about other governments? Uh, will they be following suit? Because, you know, what about CCTV, for example? It's a kind of facial recognition, isn't it? You know, we are being closely watched. So here in the United Kingdom, Lord Clement Jones, who's in the House of Lords, has said that he is going to introduce a bill for a moratorium on automated facial recognition technology after the general election on December uh, 12. So in this country, we are seeing a, a real debate here in the UK about people who would like to have it versus people who don't. What are the people who like to have it? What do they say? Well, they trot out the nothing to hide, nothing to fear arguments, um, which of course isn't isn't necessarily the most valid because we have warrants for a reason. We don't just allow the police to access our phone or walk into our house and search it. But it would make the police's life easier, wouldn't it, to have this kind of technology? If we wanted to give the police complete access to everything, we would let them walk into our house, walk into our business, have access to our DNA and fingerprints and just kind of have that as a precaution. We have made a choice in a liberal democracy. There's a spectrum between total security and total liberty. We fall somewhere on that spectrum. So China's see, going for total security. Do you see any positives in this? Not yet. Okay, interesting. Dr. Stephanie Hare, lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed.